Now that we have a few of the conversions of the Forest series, as well as looked at a simple example, I would like to now go to a more difficult one, one that which really tests our understanding, and in doing so, we would know more about this convergence theorem, which is very important for the for analysis. So our function f of x is given by this. So that's the graph that we have, and we want to find the Forest series of this graph, and after we find the Forest series of this graph, we want to use the convergence test to see where the Forest series converge to. Right, so without further ado, we first uh, find the forest series, which is what I did over here. Basically, it's the same thing. Apply formula, calculating the forest coefficients. But I'd like to uh, pay, draw your attention to a few new things or a few uh, techniques that we can find by simplifying the work. Now, A0 is given by 1 divided by 2L. Okay, remember that right now is 1 divided by 2L. Why is it 2L? Because our endpoints are minus L to L, so it's not pi. So 1 divided by 2L, uh, integrate minus 3 to function f of x. This shouldn't be a problem. And next is, then when we move to an, it's 1 divided by l. So that's why I just got a 3 over here. Integrate again, minus 3 to 3 of the function f of x. Multiply this sum by the cosine m pi x divided by l. So this, this case is 3. So this is what we have, okay? We need to split up the function f of x into minus, x, minus 3 to 0 and 0 to 3, which is what we did over here. So what, what is the next step that I noticed? Well, I noticed that there's a certain integrate minus 3 to 3 of the cosine function. And after that, there's an integrate 0 to 3 of the cosine function. So what I did is that now I'm going to group these two together, this multiplied by this, okay, and plus this thing over here, and that will just simply give me 2 integrate 0 to 3 of the cosine function. Well, why is that? Because we know that cosine is an even function. This cosine here is an even function. So what I had was minus 3, integrate minus 3 to 3 of this cosine function. Well, I can just simply, since it's even, I'll just 2 divide by 2 multiply integrate 0 to 3 of that same cosine function. Look at this carefully x is an odd function, right? cosine is an even function, so you multiply the two together, you get an odd function. Now, now that you have an odd function, I hope you do not let this equal to zero. Well, why is that? Because pay careful attention that even though if you are integrating an odd function, the limits must be uh, symmetrical, which is minus 3 to 3. But in this case, the limits are minus 3 to 0. So this, you cannot let this equal to zero because the limits are different. Be very mindful of that. If you integrate an odd function, it's only equal to zero if the limits are symmetrical. For example, minus L to L. It's not the case over here. So this stays as it is. Right? And then you do the, the integration and then you make this. Now, as we all know that this is going to be equal to cosine and n pi. And cosine n pi is going to be equal to minus 1 to the power of n. But why is it n pi? Well, basically, I can foresee here, if you substitute the 3 inside, we're going to eliminate the 3 at the bottom. Uh, I'm no, no surprise about that. Sorry, it's over uh, here. Uh, yeah, it's over here. Okay, so now this now now we need to calculate the b n zero to three of the sine function. Yeah, made a mistake. So I integrate negative three to to zero of the sine function, and then plus integrate zero to three. So basically, I get this thing over here. Now this is when you can use that rule because sine is an odd function. We're integrating negative three to three. This eliminates to zero. Okay. So recognize these things. Save yourself the trouble of doing all the algebra. Now, first, we need to evaluate this, just like how we have evaluated this using integration by parts. I've shown that in my previous examples, and this one is going to be because this thing over here. And finally, I did the forward series. Notice that if we let n, is, if n is even, this one becomes 1. 1 minus 1 is equals to 0. So you might be inclined to, to you know, eliminate this, or possibly consider just the odd cases by substituting n equals to 2n minus 1. Well, you can't do that, okay? You can't do that because always look at the entire series. If n is even, this one, the cosine function is gone. However, there, there will still be this sine function over here. n is even, so this will be 1 and the sine function still exists. So you cannot um, can just consider the even cases because you have this um, equation over here. So basically, now we have the four series. Okay, now, now we're going to move swiftly along to the convergence. What does the convergence theorem tell us? Well, the convergence theorem tells us that at those points which f of x is continuous, basically the forest series converges to uh, the function. Okay? And I stress again that remember, convergence test comes from the function itself. It doesn't come from the forest series. So that is what we want to be mindful of. So what I can immediately say now, from minus 3 to 0, basically this forest series is going to converge to this part of the graph. And likewise, for uh, 0 to 3, it's going to converge to this point. However, we recognize that there's a discontinuous point at x equals to 0. And because of that, we need to test, or we need to use the convergence test to see whether the forest series converge to. Well, obviously, it may converge, if it's going to converge to uh, f of x equals to 1. But, you know, let's just go through the proper steps of evaluating the limits. So, convergence theor theorem tells us, converges to half of the left-hand limit which we will write as 
uh, like this, plus the right hand limit as we approach from the positive side. So we will approach the point from both the left hand limit, uh, the, the left hand side, right hand side, add them up, take the limit, add them up, divide by two to you know get the, the where the porosity is converges to. So we I would like to now just maybe um, illustrate the proper evaluation of limits. Now if we are approaching it from the left side, we take limit as h tends towards positive zero. The function that we will have is this one over here. We'll take the function of the point, in this case is zero, and we'll subtract minus h. Well, as we can see, if we are approaching from the left-hand side, we're going to go in this direction. This is the function that we're going to use. Right? That's the function that we're going to use, and basically that's what we do. But we now have to substitute this inside the x, okay? So this goes inside the x, uh, basic function. So it's going to be limit h as 10 towards um, uh, positive, uh, 0 positive, and it's 2 divided by 3, 0 take away h. Uh, plus 1. Okay, and this as we know is going to be equals to 1 over here. Right. Now, if you were to do the same for the 10 uh, as we approach 0 from the positive side, is limit as h tends towards 0 plus of 0, and this time we plus h. So I guess you can just think about it as if there's a plus here, you have plus h. If there's a negative here, we have negative h. Now, does it really make a difference because after all, h is going to tend towards 0? Well, actually it doesn't, okay? But I would like to be very clear in the, in the algebra because I don't know, maybe higher level for analysis, it does make a difference. So what does this tell us? Well, this tells us that as we approach um, 0 from the positive side, the function that we will use is this one over here. Well, obviously there's no x variable here, so this does not get substituted anyway, so this just equals to 1. Right? So basically, if we substitute this thing over here, we add, add x equals to 0, x equals to 0, for a series converges to the point uh, half 1 plus 1, which is going to equal to 1, which is exactly the point over there. Okay, there's no surprise about that. Now, there's something that I forgot to mention. We are right now assuming, okay, that at x equals to 0, there's both the, the left hand and the right hand derivatives. Well, there's no surprise because the, um, we can just simply use the formula to evaluate it, but that's just, you should very be, be mindful of that as well. There's the left and right hand limits which also exist. But this time, the, the test is going to be half, and we will approach negative L, the, ne the negative endpoint from the positive side, and we will plus the function of L, and we will approach it this time from the negative side. Okay, so if we approach the positive one, we will approach it from the negative side, and if we approach the negative endpoint, we will approach it from the positive side. There's no surprise about that I R too. And again, we will evaluate the, the limits, and then we will basically get half, Okay, if we approach uh, from the positive side, this is going to give us negative 1. So, and then if we approach from this one, it's going to be plus 1. Again, it's obvious right now, but then you, can, you might want to use these things to see, you know, if you are not convinced. And this is going to be equals to 0. Okay, and I also like to draw your attention again, as you might be thinking, why when we approach from the negative side and when we approach from the positive side, it's going to be the same limit. Okay, no matter what, it's going to be the same limit, because that's what the convergence theorem tells us. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, you see, you know, look at this formula over here. Okay, if we substitute negative 3 inside x, okay, this cosine is going to turn into cosine n pi, which is going to be minus 1 to the power of n. Then one can, can, uh, still can be evaluated, uh, depending on n, what n is. However, if we substitute 3 or negative 3 inside this function over here, notice that sine n pi x is going to be equal to 0. So, it doesn't matter if we substitute um, x equals to negative 3, which in this case is the negative endpoint, or x equals to 3, which in this case is the positive endpoint, this term is going to be equal to 0, in which case we're just only left with this term over here. And that is why they converge to the same spot, because the horror series is not going to be equal to the same thing at the endpoints. Well, that's just to show you that they converge to, the endpoints converges to the same uh, place. In this case, it would be 0, which is this part over here, this part over here. So putting all this information together, what, what can we write? Well, we can write now f of x is equal to the horror series, okay, but we will have to set the domain of x. And in this case, the domain of x is negative 3 to 3. Now, I, um, I would like to say that we do not need to exclude x equals to 0. Sometimes we do need to exclude x equals to 0, but this this case we don't need to because we have tests that at x equals to 0, for a series converges to uh, 1 over here. Okay? Uh, wait, sorry. Yeah, 1 over here. And in some it turns out that the function is equal to 1 at the point over there. So, we do not need to exclude x equals to 0. We, it's fine if we put the boundaries, the, the domain as this. Now, recognize the strict inequality. Why again? Well, because at the endpoints, we have recognized that the four series now goes to negative 3 to 3. Okay? So, 
what does that mean graphically? Well, what this means is that is we um, for this whole thing, okay, remember the amount of terms that we will have depends on n. So if we let n to uh, let n equal, uh, go to infinity, we have like infinite terms. But that is the point where the four series will go closer and closer to the graph uh, defined by f of x. However, when it reaches the endpoints, okay, the four series would immediately jump to the endpoints over here. Okay. Now, actually, we would uh, put them as a blank point because when we define the forward series, we're going to put um, x is between negative 2 to 3. So basically, the forward series is not defined over here. But actually, it is. But in terms of whether it converges to the function, it doesn't. Okay? The function over here is negative 1. Down here is 1. But the forward series goes to negative 3 and 3. Okay? So that is what the convergence theorem tells us and how we'll use it to see convergence of a function like this.